Hello everyone and welcome to the Green Man's channel. Hope you're doing good and well. So it's time for another episode of Symphonic Sundays and this time I'm ranking the albums of the Dutch symphonic metal band Delane. Delane were formed in 2002 by Martin Westerholt after his departure from Within Temptation. He went on to meet singer Charlotte Wessels in around about 2005 and then they released the first album for Delane in 2006. That was of course Lucidity. I will be ranking these seven studio albums from my least favourite to my favourite in the usual format and please don't come into this ranking video expecting to see exactly the same ranking as your own. I always think you're going to be a little bit disappointed if you do that with that kind of approach. Um, and it's interesting really for this band, I don't really know what the popular opinions or the popular albums are for this band so I'm going into this ranking kind of blind because I haven't had any external influence but I think that's a good thing to go in more blind to a uh, band album ranking than to have been influenced because it definitely gives my own perspective and uh, completely uninfluenced by other sources. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this ranking with you. Uh, do drop in your comments, your favourite Delane albums or maybe your own rankings or your favourite songs of the band. I look forward to reading those later on. So let's start with my least favourite album for Delane, which is 2012's uh, We Are The Others, uh, an album which I just found a little bit too simplistic for my taste. It's not that it's a very bad album or anything, um, but the songs to me, although they have a catchiness to them, they don't have hooks or, or melodies which really appeal to me very much in contrast to, for me, albums from Delane, which are a little heavier, a little bit more powerful and epic, and this one to me is just a little or two on the safe side for me to really enjoy and really pick out songs that I, you know, really love. Although, you know, there's a part of me that quite enjoys uh, songs like Hit Me With Your Best Shot, um, Where Is The Blood, which actually I believe features uh, Birds and Bell of Fear Factory. And I also quite enjoyed Get The Devil Out Of Me, which was a single from this album as well. But apart from that, I didn't find too much that appealed to me um, about We Are The Others from 2012. So that's my least favourite album coming in at number seven. Now, at number six, we have The Human Contradiction, which was a couple of hours, a couple of years later. Um, and that was Delane's next release. This was when they moved over to releasing records on the uh, Napalm label. And um, I did enjoy, again, I really liked the singles on this album, actually. Uh, Stardust and Sing To Me. And I love the album closer, Tragedy of the Commons, which also I think was a particular highlight of this album. Although I think it somewhat suffers from similar issues to We Are The Others. I do feel like the tracks are a little bit better written on this album, a little bit more interesting than the uh, prior album, which is why it's a touch higher in my order coming in here at number six. So that's The Human Contradiction 2014 coming in as my number six. Now, next time we move on to the albums, I think I start to really like. And my number five is actual, actually April Rain. Uh, this came out in 2009. And I feel like this was where the band, you know, after their debut release, they started to very clearly move into a bit more of an accessible, more radio sound. And their look and aesthetic, even on the front cover, kind of reminded me a little bit of like, you know, a band like Paramore's sort of look. Um, and I feel like because Paramore were a really big band in the late 2000s, maybe there was an element of influence from bands like that going on around that time. And maybe that crept over into Delane's uh, approach and style, but I'm only saying that based on, you know, my impression of this album when it came out. Um, but, you know, it's it's a pretty solid album. Again, it's got a, kind of got the catchiness of this era of Delane albums and the poppiness and the accessibility of those records. Um, again, it sometimes falls a little bit on the simplistic side for my liking, but it actually, I think there are some genuinely good catchy songs on this album with the kind of hooks I can get behind a bit more. Um, I, I particularly enjoy Virtue and Vice, Start Swimming, Nothing Left. I feel like this album is, is very good in its second half for me. It has a really strong second half uh, to this record. So that's my number five, An April Rain from 2009. Coming in at number four, I feel like is a bit of a dark horse in this band's discography. Um, that is, of course, Moonbathers, which was released, um, I think, back in 2016. Uh, some of my favourite tracks on this album include the likes of The Hurricane, Fire With Fire and Pendulum. And I just feel like by this point, they, I feel like they were going from strength to strength with those 2010 albums. And this one for me was... Uh, you know, possibly the strongest release from that particular era where they got on the songwriting for me uh, down more to a T with, with where they were going with these albums. Uh, I think it's got some great performances from Charlotte Wessels on, on this album as well. I feel like the songwriting is, is that bit more impactful 
Um, and I just generally find, you know, just a little bit more interesting, although it still does suffer a little bit from some of the problems of the prior two releases, which I talked about a bit lower down in my ranking here. But I do quite enjoy uh, Moonbathers. I do think it's a bit a bit underrated as far as Delane album goes, and it's kind of one of those albums that falls in the middle of their discography. So it's one of those I think might be forgotten about a bit against some of their other releases, perhaps. So I think I think Moonbathers is, is genuinely a really um, really pretty good album, pretty solid album in their in their discography. Well worth checking out. So certainly if if you're new to Delane. And next up at my number three, we have 2020's Apocalypse and Chill, which I understand was inspired somewhat by world events and, and climate change and things like that. It actually came out before the COVID pandemic. And I think, you know, seeing that this album came out in 2020, it would be even to this easy to mistake the fact that the big influence for this album was indeed the COVID pandemic. Well, it was actually other events that uh, preceded the release of this album rather than COVID. But as it transpires, looking back, it was also very apt as a release for those times in 2020. So, um, you know, interesting to read up about that for Apocalypse and Chill. And so I think it came out in about February of that year, which was not long before, obviously, everything hit fan um, in 2020. It is a really strong, really powerful, heavy album for me, with some of Charlotte's most incredible vocal performances in the likes of songs like Masters of Destiny, for example. Absolutely huge track with a huge vocal performance. And it's hard not to be absolutely knocked for six by someone like that. Uh, then you've got other songs which I find I enjoy the way they incorporate the keyboard parts in this album and bring out the melodies with those like We Had Everything. Um, I also love the metalcore style of, of this record and I find it interesting as well that um, Martin's Brothers band uh, Within Temptation also have kind of gone in a bit of a metalcore direction which I feel this album does as well. It also goes a little bit straight into metalcore territory you know but it's got a really punchy really heavy sound which I gravitate towards very much so. Um, I love the final track Combustion and what an instrumental track that is, incredible song. Um, so that's also a, a favourite album closer of mine on this on this record as well, on this particular release. So Apocalypse and Chill is my number three. I think mean, that's a great album from Delay. And interestingly, this was the last album before the Delay, uh, the, the band, the members of that time split. And you'd think that, you know, usually albums before a band, band split tend not to be so good. Um, you know, I think of some classic examples, maybe like Queensryche, uh, for example. But in this case... Um, this album is actually really, really good. And I find that interesting. You know, it's like they, they didn't let the tension or maybe some of the tricky relationships that may have been going on at the time actually influence the music. They still made sure the music was really good for Apocalypse and Chill. This is one of the best Delane albums. Definitely go out and listen to this one if you've not heard it before. It's a great album. Now, my top two I found really difficult to decide on. Number two is Dark Waters, and honestly, I still find it criminal that this album, including my own end of year list, didn't include this, but I didn't really realise how much I enjoyed this album until after I produced my end of year list. I think Dark Waters introducing Diana Lear to the band, obviously after the band, band broke apart, uh, and Martin sort of reformed the band effectively with some older, older band members, like the likes of Ronald uh, Lander, coming back for guitars and backing vocals and Sander Zoa on drumming duties and, and they reformed and I feel like that this was one of those examples where a lineup change really works for the band um, and it's not that Apocalypse and Chill you know like I say that was a really great album but it feels like Dark Waters is even better as a sort of cohesive unit of songs uh, it's just incredible the way that there's suddenly the chemistry of this band which I feel like you know, maybe Martin getting back together with some of the other band members just sort of made something work really, really well here. It's like the magic came together that was perhaps existing there before with the early albums of the band, like Lucidity, for example. And it came back and suddenly you get just this absolutely incredible release with a new energy, of course, I think, brought to the band by Diana Lear as well and she's just she's just fantastic on this album you know filling the shoes of charlotte but doing so in you know absolutely fearless fashion um i don't get the hate for if there, if there is hate out there i wouldn't get it for this because i think diana is a great singer in her own right and she's shown how well she fits the music of, of delaine here this album is fantastic and like i say i can't believe it wasn't on any lists that i saw last year it's it's really deserving of, of 
getting more recognition for me. Um, I know it's it's sort of a, a band. There are bands on a big label, and they're a well known name. But but the fact this album went completely under the radar, it feels like for me in in this YouTube community, feels really bad. This album is genuinely fantastic, and I will keep going on and on about this album as long as I can because it's just a great album. Dark Waters. It's my number two, but that means it's not quite number one. Because I just think this debut album is a classic symphonic metal album and, it, and Dark Waters hasn't quite beaten it for me. It's not quite beaten this classic Delane album, this Lucidity debut release from 2006, which I just think is a really strong album. Um, you know, uh, the success of this album actually really launched the band as a touring band as well. That's what I understand and what I've read that this really launched the band, Delane. And it's got great songs on here, classic tracks like Sever, uh, See Me in Shadow, a bit of a ballad, great performance from Charlotte on that song, The Gathering, and A Day for Ghosts, just a phenomenal record front to back for me. It's easy to why, see why so many people, um, probably, you know, like me, have come to love that album. Great classic release from Delane. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this ranking video. Don't forget to drop a like and a sub if you've enjoyed this. I am going to be doing other album rankings on, on the channel. I think next coming up will be Beyond the Black, so look out for that one. Otherwise, from me, until next time, um, until next time, rather, <laughs> see you next time.